was some evidence to suggest that Hayley was stranded. Hayley was a friend of mine. There's something I need to tell you. It's happened. They've come. The police. I think we want to know more about four guys who grew up. Point five percent down from last week, so that's point six kilos of fat. Right. Okay. Cool. So yeah, not not bad at all. So there's like some traveling, weight and stuff. Yeah. Your weight has dropped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one point five kilos from last week, which is two months. Yeah. yeah, Neil. I don't know what Neil will say about that. To be honest, he might. Got a wide lens. <laughs> <laughs> There's a millimetre off there, yeah, 0.4 off subscap. So, so in comparison to... 7th, Yeah, August, so a little bit further on, but it was still higher at that point. So that is actually lower now than it was in 2016. The difference you found with obviously your meal frequency is the what difference that's had here yeah. with your lean mass. So. Yes. Yeah. So we have come down then in those but Yeah, all the all the sites are, are you know, body fat wise it's 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 fine. It's just it's obviously body weight of which some of that has come from muscle mass, you know. But where, where then? Where is that film? There. Right. Of which previously 81, 83, 84, and right. then I drop to eighty-three point. So it's wow. a kilo. So that one point five kilos you've lost is a kilo worth of muscle and half a kilo of fat. For the first time, that's where you trended muscle down in this prep, which is yeah. not a bad, you know. No, I know, yeah, no, I know. We, we know why that is, yeah. you know, like I say, it's, it's traveling, it's missing meals, it's yeah. changing, you know, you know training for these easy. here, these metrics here are all indications of, of underfeeding, you know, with the fact that they've still dropped, that is that depletion, that's yeah. that deficit, what you'd expect to see straight away. Okay. Uh, so, you know, not, not, okay. not a showstopper, right, at all, you know, yeah. it's still, the, the, the trend is point, where is 1%, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, point and then what we drop. Yeah, yeah, the percentage body fat, yeah. So, um, you know, yeah, next week yeah, we'll see, next Wednesday we'll see if we can uh, get that to stabilise a bit more. Don't so flat, don't want so disappoint. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's all right, I, just, I knew it was, was going to happen. Obviously in 2017 at the Olympia, um, I geared everything up uh, and give myself the best possible chance um, for, for getting that first place. And I actually uh, dropped places, went from second to sixth in front of friends, family, sponsors, um, fans, huge fans. Um, so for me, it was very difficult, something I'd not prepared myself for. Um, and I've got to admit, it hit me very, very hard. Um, for me, I'd moved my life over to America. I'd taken my fiance Amy with me, uh, left friends, family, my comfort zone. Uh, I was second in the world uh, ranked and I was the current Arnold Classic champion. So for me, I felt like everything was in place for that first place and I never really thought of anything prior to winning that. So, so obviously when I stepped off stage uh, coming sixth, uh, it hit me very, very hard. Um, I went into, I must admit, a slight depression. I had three months away from the gym. I just couldn't find the motivation to to eat those six meals, to get up in the morning and do my cardio, to go to the gym and actually enjoy it. I was just turning up because I had to and I felt I needed to be in the gym, but um, I wasn't getting the pumps and, and the enjoyment out of training. So yeah, I stepped away from the gym um, and had three months and I wanted to miss the gym. I wanted to get that, that fire back. Um, and yeah, I've got to admit, it took longer than I thought it would, three months. Um, came back to my family, came back to the UK, uh, which has been an absolute blessing for me. Uh, having that support network around me has, has been amazing. Having Amy by my side, uh, who's supported me all the way, um, has, has, been, has been really good. And it's slowly but surely, coming through this summer, uh, I've got more and more fired up, getting back into my routine, um, uh, training back with my, uh, my old training partner who I've been with for the past 10 years, back in the same gym, back in the same kitchen, prepping my meals, and everything's start to, to fall back into place and, and I'm back where I want to be again, fired up for the Olympia, um, motivated to train, can't wait to get in the gym, happy with my regimented meals, getting up in the morning for my cardio, uh, and that's everything I feel you need in order to be a, a competitor on the Olympia stage. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're eight weeks out. I'm, I'm really fired up, really motivated. And I've, I've got a point to prove, not only to myself, but to uh, my family, friends, to everyone 
who believes in me. Uh, the support has been absolutely immense and crazy. And I do, I feel like I, I need to make amends from last year. And sixth place is not where I want to end my career. Um, and I've still got a title to win. Uh, that is really the only title I'm gunning for. Um, I feel I've, I've achieved everything I've wanted to achieve in my career, luckily. Um, and that is the last tick for me. That's the last uh, tick in the box I need. So, um, so this year, I'm more than motivated. I'm leaving no stone unturned. Back to basics, and uh, I'm going to hit this Olympic prep hard. And come September, I will be making amends for, for last year. A lot of you follow me, or if you're close to me, you will, uh, you'll know that that is how I work best. Um, it's not really the right attitude to have, because at the end of the day, if you're the best in the world, you need to be able to deal with those pressures and, and, um, and yeah, those obstacles. But for me, I've always worked better as an, as an underdog, and uh, I feel like the pressure's off me. People are talking about other big names, um, and the top 10 this year is, I didn't even say the top 15, in the world it is phenomenal so it's anyone's game and for me I prep better like this no one's talking about me and for good reason I dropped like I say I dropped out of the top five and um, so so let them do the talking and uh, it gives me a chance to keep my head down and get to work
We've done a walk every morning um, over the fields, as you saw, um, and it's so tranquil and quiet and peaceful, and it's a part of the world I can just get away from everything, the stresses of life, and uh, me and Amy just, we switch off, we talk about goals, obviously, and um, we talk about what we want to do as, as a couple in the future, not only my competing goals, but um, things outside of, of the sport, uh, i.e. a family, obviously getting married next year, uh, we've got a big house renovation, uh, and that's all things what I think uh, I need to keep me stable and to keep me grounded and, and to not put too much pressure on myself and to overthink things. And I've got to admit, in previous preps, i.e. the last one, that is something uh, I did massively. I put a lot of pressure on myself. It's all I thought about for 12 weeks and it drained me to the point where it became not as enjoyable as previous preps. It was more a case of, of having to or this is what I have to do, whereas I want to do it. So. Uh, so those walks are a reflection of, of yeah of everything we've got to, to look forward to in the future, and obviously getting that cardio done to, to strip that stored fat and uh, make sure I'm ready come game day. So the changes I'm trying to make this year, um, we are trying to come in bigger, but not sacrificing my condition. So I've always been known for condition on stage, never for the size game. So uh, last year, that's one other thing I, I kind of did wrong. I, um, a couple of weeks out, decided to change my, my game plan, tried to come in a bit fuller, um, but obviously uh, I sacrificed condition. Whereas uh, this year I'm going in with a plan to come in a lot slower, um, and focus on really getting that grainy condition, but trying to maintain as much muscle as I can. I think in previous years, especially the previous Olympia, I've over-dieted, over-trained in order to get that condition, and I've sacrificed a lot of muscle. Whereas this Olympia, we're trying to be sensible. Obviously, I've got a new coach who is, uh, is very methodical in his thought and his, uh, his training patterns, and we are trying to come down slowly, which we're measuring each week to make sure we are, but trying to keep that muscle mass and that fullness throughout this prep.
because again what you're trying to do is, is, is you know work the tissue work the muscle and just elongate it um, and get it more flexible it's one thing if you if you've got like tight muscles or hypertonic muscles um, very susceptible to injuries then whereas if you're nice loose flexible um, the elasticity in the muscle things like that um, you stand a better chance of, of good going injury free and in Ryan's case that's essential so reduce the risk of injury especially on a time scale like the Olympia when you've only got 14 15 weeks of prep last thing you want to be doing is getting getting injured four weeks into your prep um, and then that puts you puts you back a few weeks so oh that's amazing So I don't know if you can see like, the redness in there compared to that side, so I've only just worked on this side. What was the cupping for? The cupping, so the cupping is a myofascial release, so basically it creates a vacuum um, in the cup rather than massage is putting pressure down on the body, that's actually raising it up. Um, so you imagine like layers of skin, tissue, and it just kind of separates and pulls them up. And again, you can see the redness in all the areas that we've worked on. And uh, it promotes circulation to the areas. And then with circulation, obviously you get oxygenated blood, blood with nutrients in it. So it gets into the muscles, helping recovery. Uh, so that was a positional release, or a lot of people, so mainly Americans, call it active release or ART. Um, so you place the, the muscle in a shortened position, pin it, kind of pin it and stretch it. So you pin the muscle and then you, you allow the movement, the natural movement of the body just to, just to stretch that out a little bit. So just using various techniques all within one, one session. Um, whereas just saying, you know, we're just going to massage this just using various techniques, cupping, myofascial release, PRTs, ARTs. Um, and then with some of the stretching that we did with the band, um, it's got MET or muscle energy technique. Um, and then other people call it a PNF. But don't ask me to repeat what that, that, that means. Oh. Probably the open guys and two two one twos, they'll have to do different poses, so they have to be able to hit them a lot more. Whereas, what? How many poses have you got? Two. Two. Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, a, a major one for Ryan is probably opening up his his lats, um, and just holding that that front on position. So again, if this is all tight through here, can't actually open them out. I mean, that's one of the things we have been working on. About three sessions? Two full sessions on it, really working it, finding where the issue was, and um, it enables him to, to do what he needs to do, and then it has an impact on his training as well.